Hey everybody, welcome back once again. I am Colin Weaver. These are the IT Dojo CISSP questions of the day, where each and every time I come at you, I'm bringing two questions to help you as you continue to prep for your CISSP exam. So, let's do it. First question today, which resource intensive access control mechanism, which is sometimes implemented in databases, allows for control over access to an object or resource based upon the type of data the resource or object contains. It's a lot of words. There's your answer choices. Look them over. Think about it. Click pause if you need to. When you're ready, click play and we can break it all down. First answer choice is the wrong answer choice. Discretionary access control in no way, shape, or form goes in and controls access based upon what kind of data is contained within. Discretionary access control allows the owner of the resource, usually a file when we talk about it like this, uh, but the owner of the object or the owner of the resource to be able to go in and um, at their discretion, assign permissions to other users or other systems. So that is very much not what we're looking for here. All right, how about number two then, mandatory access control. That's also a giant negative. Mandatory access control is, and I'm speaking generally here, is when the administrator of the system will go in and set a particular uh, permission based upon labels that are assigned to subjects and objects, and those then are enforced and are unmodifiable. Uh, the content of the data does not dictate any sort of dynamic control. Uh, we have a resource, we assign it a, a level of security, and that becomes the level of security for that resource. So um, if the content were to change, it would not change access. It would require the administrator of the system to go in and change that access. And that is very much not what we're looking for here. We're looking for a type of access control that can actually allow or not access to a resource based on what the resource actually contains. What kind of data does it have? How about role-based access control? No. Role-based access control. We create a role. We give users, typically, that role. The role has privilege. Because the user is assigned the role, the user, therefore, has those same privileges. Um, nothing in the question talks about that. So very much not what we're looking for. So we continue. How about view-based access control? All right, that leaves us then with content-based access control, which is absolutely the answer that we are looking for. Uh, content-based access control can dynamically change your ability to access a particular resource based upon what it contains. So in the case of a database, what type of data is in the record or in the particular field. Um, it is, however, resource intensive because it requires a lot of additional logic in order to be able to go in and make those kinds of decisions. So that is very much the answer that you're looking for. And the last answer choice, which was context-based access control, is also not the appropriate answer that we're looking for here. Uh, context-based access control very often seen in, in, say, conceptually in things like uh, firewall rules, where you're going to say if traffic's coming from here and going to here, then uh, in that context it's allowed. Uh, but um, nothing to deal with what the actual content is, at, at least not in basic firewall rules. Okay, question number two today. A lot of words. Apologies. Um, a, an Active Directory domain admin has created a security group called uh, Research and Development Project Z and added to that security group members of Team Project Z. He then takes that security group and using a group policy object configures the system to only allow access to Project Z servers to members of this group through the group policy object. My question for you is, what type of access control conceptually is that an example of? Here's your answer choices. Give it a read. When you think you got the right answer, click play. We'll talk it through. First batter up, discretionary access control, no. Discretionary access control, again, is when the end user has the ability to go in and define what the levels of access are to an object that they are the owner of or that they're the ones who created, uh, which usually makes them the owner. 
um, not always, but um, definitely not what we're looking for right here. So the second answer choice is context-based access control. Again, not what we're looking for. Context-based access controls are very famously associated with like access control lists on firewalls. Um, they might also go in and be used to control, say, uh, access based on, on disk quotas or the frequency of, of uh, you know, how many times have you accessed this today or this week or something like that. So that's what context-based access control does. And our scenario that we have in this question doesn't doesn't touch that at all. All right, next option is non-discretionary access control, which is very commonly also referred to as role-based access control. Now, in role-based access control, again, keeping it simple, because there's a lot of little tweaks and nuances that we could go down the rabbit hole on with this, but in role-based access control, we have the concept of a role that is created that has certain privileges and then we assign users to that role, and by virtue of that role being assigned to them, they gain the privileges and permissions associated with the role, which is very much what is happening in this question. We've gone in and we've created a role, effectively Project uh, Z, and then we have assigned users to that role, and then we've gone in and given a privilege to that role, which is the ability to access some servers from the network. Therefore, the users, by virtue of their membership, or their, well, their membership in that group, which is acting as the role, are then allowed to access this system or these servers across the network, okay? Now, uh, I'll save it for another discussion, but I can go on a long tirade about um, the lack of Microsoft Windows being a role-based access control system, although um, we can make it look like, smell like, taste like one in pretty compelling ways, but, uh, I'll talk to you about it another day as to, as to why I don't feel that it is a true role-based access control system in any way, shape, or form. Anyhow, that's the right answer, but let's go ahead and take a peek at the other ones just to make sure we feel good about all the other answer choices that are not correct. All right, and the final choice on our list was view-based access controls, and uh, definitely not even in the realm of being uh, the right answer choice here. Again, view-based access controls, again, very commonly associated with things like databases where we're going in and creating a constrained view, um, or which is really just a dynamically generated table that only allows you to see a subset of the information, and it's almost always created as a result of a query that goes in and creates a dynamic table, which we call a view, that allows you to see certain things. So, you know, it's pretty easy to give examples of this, you know, not the least of which would be something like, you know, go to amazon.com and search for anything. Uh, what are you seeing? You're seeing the results of a whole bunch of stuff that's in a database, but you're not seeing all the information that's in the database. You're seeing a constrained view that is just for customers to be able to see. Um, there are other interfaces that I'm sure Amazon has available to them where the appropriate people can see other information. But So not what we're looking for here. doesn't even begin to come close to the answer that we were looking for. Cool. All right. Two questions down. Hope they help you. Like subscribe, all that fun stuff that every YouTuber everywhere always says in all their videos, myself included. Whew. Bye.